So, Darren, we're about 450 metres out here. How much of this is, is a crucial part in the race? This is where the action starts. This is where jockeys start to get off the fence or starting to make their run. The whole complexity of the race starts to change. So there's a lot of action going on here, a lot of screaming, um, and uh, trying to keep your momentum going so you've got your horse into, into a nice rhythm as it turns for home. Now, in that race preparation, you said earlier you've had maybe four or five rides. How much is knowing that in the straight, a certain part of the track that you want to be in, and how much of it here at the 450 leads up to getting into the right position in the straight? Well, hopefully the guys on the, 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 the leading guys will be able to sort of head you in that right direction. If they've uh, dropped their, their ball game, then you've got to try and capitalise on that. And, um, and knowing you know, what part of the, the track is the best part of the track in the home straight to, to put your horse on. So from here on 4.50 out, this is where it really starts to matter. We've got a steward's tower just behind us. Is, are these areas of the race the, the cleanest? Well, it's funny, you know, the stewards slash highway patrolmen, um, they seem to put it in appropriate positions where all the action is. So it just makes their job very easy. It's just a no-brainer. Certainly is, and there's plenty of armchair jockeys at home ready to uh, give you a spray from over the fence. Exactly. It's, um, it's one thing to be at home on the lounge chairs I've experienced lately, but it's another thing to be out here. And, uh, you know, you're going at 60 k's an hour and you've got probably 10 sets of eyes on you watching every move that you make. All right, well, we'll start heading into the straight and, and find out what it takes to win a Canterbury BMW Classic. So, Darren, Canterbury's quite an even cambered track. If you need to make a wide run, how much does that camber help you? Oh, it's uh, it's imperative, the the camber on this track, especially for horses that are caught three wide. It keeps them on the track, and it's still they, they're still confidently running on that track and going forward uh, and keeping their momentum going. So, you know, we're, we're, we're here at the 200 metre mark, and by now you've pretty well much got your horse into full swing, and uh, and hopefully you've you've set your path and uh, you've got your line, how you want to get down to the winning post. So the straight here at Canterbury is 309 metres, relatively mm. short in, in horse racing terms. Now you've gotten yourself into the straight, it's 200 out. When the, the horses in front are starting to weaken, how much is it a 50-50 decision of, oh, I'm going to go left, I'm going to go back to the fence? It's a bit like driving in peak hour traffic. You've got to be watching what's going on, who's not coping, and uh, you've, your mind's got to be ticking all the time. So. Most horses have only got, say, a good 300 metre sprint, uh, most race horses. So Canterbury is a, is a type of track that suits most runners that have got that short explosive sprint of two and three lengths, and then you can just maintain that. Now, at the 200, how often do you, you feel the horse underneath you has got enough in it for the win, and, and what sort of feeling is that when you, when you know you've got your rivals beat? Well. A lot goes to the speed of the race, how, how quick the leaders have gone. If they've gassed themselves and they've gone too quick up front, you know that if you just keep putting a little bit of pressure on them without putting too much pressure on your horse, they're going to fold. But you don't want to go the early crow and make it for a back marker. So it's, a, it's, a, it's all about timing at this part of the race. Now, some horses like the whip, some others don't. How much of it is that you've got to really start digging in and, and getting the best out of your mount? Well, up to this point of the race, a jockey, uh, probably at another an another 100 metres, uh, a jockey is only allowed to hit the horse four times in a forward position, uh, forward hand action. So the key is, you know, I don't, I don't believe, you know, hitting a horse will win a race. It's, it's a matter of getting the horse's mind thinking that he's going better than what he is, but you try and save the best till last. OK, Darren, we're here at the business end of the race. We're here at the finish line. You've got a good jump, you've posited up down the hill, you've come around the bend, you've straightened up, you've given the horse everything you've got. Is here where the every part of the race comes to fruition? Oh exactly, this is where it really counts at the end of the end of the day and um, hopefully you're hitting, hitting the line full of running. You don't want to be taking little pussy footsteps so, you know, the last 50 metres so hopefully hitting the line strong and um, it's just getting your horse to want to win. Um, and that's, that's a, it becomes a more of a psychological battle then. 
yeah, you do find some horses have a have a, a problem with the winning post, and mm. it's a, a punter's worst nightmare when a, a horse gets to the front, maybe 50, 25 out, and then just seems to weaken to the post. Were you a hands and heels rider out to the line? You see Michael Rod get his hand nice and high up to the horse's head. Did you have a preferred technique? Look, uh, you know, I tried to use a lot a, a lot of upper body strength, um, but it was different strokes for different horses, different circumstances, uh, sort of a bit of an all-rounder. Um, but um, I did like to sort of try and get the horse into full stride before I actually did actually go for it. Yeah, you won over 70 Group 1 races. What's the feeling when you, you hit this winning post and you know you've won one of the, the big races on the racing calendar? Oh, it's a great thrill because there's so much of a build-up to it. And what, whilst it only might just seem one race, every race is important for an owner, uh, for a trainer, for the punters, for the public, for everyone, uh, everyone concerned. So you know that uh, job's done when you get the, when you get the result. Now we've got the plastic rail behind us and on the weekend race goers would have noticed uh, a pretty bad accident with uh, Circle of Power and Blake Spriggs actually kicking out the bottom rails which is what's meant to happen in these, the plastic rail. What's that like to have it, just an added safety bonus for, for riders and horses? Well you know we go back years ago it was all, all wooden, um, they didn't move. Um, you know, and uh, they were quite dangerous, but that's what they used. Then we went to aluminium, and now we've gone to plastic. And uh, so they're just um, advancing on technology, and obviously you've, it's, 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 um, it's horse safety and, and jockey safety, and um, that's paramount. And um, obviously the, the plastic rails are doing the job. Well, thanks, Darren. Thanks for walking us around the track, and thanks to Canterbury BMW. This is the fifth year of their sponsorship for the Canterbury BMW Classic, and it must be pretty nice to go home in a, in a brand new BMW. Exactly. Uh, Canterbury BMW have been a great, great supporter of mine, and uh, yeah, as they say, um, it's driving relationships. So they've been great friends of mine, and um, yeah, it's a, a great company and a, a great group of people. Well, remember if you want to be here for Canterbury BMW Classic Night, tickets are always available at tickettech.com.au and we'll see you at the track. Swim,